After about 6 million of Ukrainians fled the war, the perception of refugees in the world changed a lot. If before refugees used to be seen like someone poor, sometimes not educated, the one who seek for permanent stay and better life, Ukrainians proved that they love their country, they want to come back and fled Ukraine temporary, and each of them have their own story. That is why I decided to start introducing you to Ukrainians who just fled the war and let them talk about their stories, um, how they live in today, what they are doing. So meet Kristina. She is teacher and translator of Spanish language from Kyiv. Hi, my name is Kristina. I am Ukrainian and currently I am in the UK. Um, so I was at home in Kiev, um, doing my normal, living my normal life, um, doing normal things, enjoying my family, my life there, my job there, like I guess the majority of people. Um, almost a month, yeah, yeah, like three so weeks. It, it was during the most uh, difficult time in Kiev during the. So well, I, yeah, pretty much, yeah. Uh, well, first I left for the Carpathian Mountains. So first I, like, I decided to do it step by step because it was way too difficult for me. So yeah, so first I decided to leave Kiev uh, and I went to the Carpathian Mountains um, to a uh, city where my cousin lives and works and I stayed with her for a month or so and then after that finally when I got my visa I went here uh, it's not that I didn't want to it's more like first yeah, I was pretty decisive that I wanted to stay with my family in Kiev and I didn't want to leave but then after like it's just that you have a lot of tension and you hear bombings and uh, you see fear in others and, and then almost everybody left and I remember that I stayed with my parents and uh, in our uh, building we were like three families and every time we went out to buy I don't know bread or medicines it was like like nobody on the street uh, and like n n zero noises zero voices and you just hear sirens and bombings and um, I wasn't scared just like that but after quite some time it just it, it, like it accumulates inside and every time you are more and more nervous and then um, yeah I tried to convince my family to live with me but in the end I decided that I love them and they love me but everybody it's a, it's, it's a very difficult decision that everybody has to make themselves and you cannot try and persuade people. Um, so yeah, so I decided to leave at least for a month or so just to see how things were going to uh, develop. And yeah, and uh, I decided to go and stay with my cousin. And then I stayed there. And my friend here in England, uh, she tried to convince me to come and she actually organized everything herself because I didn't want to participate in the visa application and everything. And she did it all for, like, for me. And I remember that she told me, OK, so let's just get your visa. And then when you get it, if you get it, you will decide whether to come or not. So, um, yeah, I stayed um, for a month with my cousin uh, in the Carpathian Mountains. And um, after that, it, like I had to um, turn, like to give back the flat where I was staying. So I basically I didn't have a place to stay there, and I had two options: or go back to Kiev, or come here. Because it, basically it was just a very good timing because I got my visa that last week that I could stay there, and I was in like crossroad deciding what to do. And uh, yeah, I thought that why not? And my main aim was that maybe here I could be more helpful for my country because yeah, I could, I could go back to Kiev and just be with my family, with my loved ones. But then uh, I didn't know how to help there. And then in Ukraine, like people are helping a lot. Um, and I thought that we could also use some help from outside, um, spreading the word, 
um, yeah, uh, talking about our situation, convincing pe people to help, and also supporting our people here. So yeah, uh, my main aim was to, if, if I could be more helpful here than in Ukraine, then I would prefer, of course, to be here. Mm, so it wasn't about my safety. It was more about where I could, I speak languages, so yeah, it was more about where I could be more helpful. Well, my parents, well, my people, <laughs> first of all, uh, my parents, my grandfather, uh, like my relatives, uh, my uncle, my, my cousins. Um, yeah, then things, uh, material things like an apartment, uh, a car, well, like uh, things that um, in the end maybe are not as important, but that make your life what it is. And um, yeah, it was very difficult for me also to uh, leave my, my, my things behind. It, it, simple things like, I don't know, my plants. I have a lot of plants at home. And I remember that it, they're like my babies. I just love them. And I remember that I was crying and I was actually saying goodbye to them because I didn't know if I would be able to see, see it all again. And like my walls, my furniture, my, my blankets, my, my dishes, like simple things that someone can say, well, it's well, like, it's not a big deal. It is a big deal because those things, they are like small pieces of a puzzle that in the end is your life. So, yeah. Oh, I entertain myself working, <laughs> basically. Yeah, because uh, I'm a teacher and I teach online. So my professional, uh, like the professional side of my life hasn't really changed uh, because I had worked online before and now I basically keep on working with my students, um, with my classes. I have, um, yeah, quite a lot of work now um, and I'm, I'm pretty active with that. And then my free time, well, my free time, <laughs> I occupy myself with trying to help here, uh, participating in different projects, um, volunteer proje projects and uh, yeah, just trying to go into protests, uh, to our Ukrainian meetups and uh, participating in different uh, events uh, for Ukraine, to raise money for Ukraine. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, as, 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 I, as I said before, my main aim was to try and be some, somewhat helpful here. So this is what I'm trying to do um, to, yeah, to, to somehow justify my decision to be here. Yeah, I actually went back to Ukraine uh, a month ago um, and I am going soon again. Um, I think that I could probably uh, go back, uh, back, back and stay in Ukraine because I mean people are, are going back and um, um, life goes on and uh, yeah, there's still bombing and there's still uh, sirens, but in the end, um, you adjust to every kind of situation. Um, but then again, um, if, 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 if I went right now, I would be just, well, I would be with my family, which is a very important personal thing. But um, I don't have like anybody there. And of course, there are like a lot of volunteer projects that I probably could participate in. But I feel like here, we for now we have a group of very special people uh, with very cool and interesting ideas. And I feel like I found my uh, place helping. And I think that uh, like maybe in general, the things that I do are not as um, massive and uh, important but I also think that if everybody does whatever they can like just small steps in the end the general uh, picture is uh, very important very nice and I feel like now the things that I do here they are important also for my country and I could do more uh, here than there for example. So if I choose like, okay, being with my family in Ukraine, which is important on my on the personal level, or staying here and helping to my country, I think that maybe, um, yeah, it makes more sense for me to be here for now. Um, food, 
<laughs> I'm not I'm not a foodie uh, but and I like before I never even thought of like oh, okay so like I would miss uh, I don't know this or that and every time I go to the supermarket and see those bowls of soup and half cooked uh, food it just makes me sad and uh, yeah mm, uh, I miss my kitchen, I miss my um, stove, I, like, I miss simple things, uh, I miss um, driving my car and sitting with the windows open and yeah like, like stupid silly uh, small things but in the end they add uh, color to your life so yeah things like that. Well, my circle of people, uh, yeah, um, like some of them um, already had work from before. But they're just now they they work online basically, and then uh, people that I am close to now um, that lost their jobs, pre their previous jobs, they do work like crazy cleaning like they they um, accept uh, every offer of every possible job just to yeah move forward and uh, like many of them have kids that depend on them and uh, yeah uh, I'd say like I mean Ukrainians are famous for being pretty active and like we are not as as a whole of course there are lazy people but as a whole we are not a lazy nation and we are very hard working um, and at least like from what I can judge and looking at my um, circle pretty big circle here everybody does something and apart from their main job I don't know like doing whatever um, they also uh, try to help as much as they can uh, during our volunteer projects and events thank you so much for watching this video stand with ukraine pray for ukraine support ukraine and uh, the victory day is closer with every second thank you